Hey guys, it is Harlow of Harlow Heslop's Virtual Adventures, and so this is a like part two, I guess, of my Black Dragon viewer settings um, vlog that I did uh, previously, and um, I figured I would go ahead and do a um, photo editing video of the photo I ended up with in Black Dragon. And um, I ended up adding a face projector light um, and doing a different wind light than the one that you see at the end of the video. So um, the image ended up being a little bit different from um, what I was showing you guys in the last video. I didn't want my last video to end up being like an hour long, so I um, uh, ended up messing with it after uh, I was done filming a little bit more just to make my shadows a little less harsh. Uh, you can get um, a lot of different projector lights off of Marketplace um, that are handy to help just brighten up your avatar, uh, take away any kind of harsh lighting um, that you see on the face. And um, I will try and link to some of those uh, in the comments below. Uh, my dear friend Aria Christian um, or Aria Spiriter now she is the one that um, linked me to these specific face projectors and they've been very helpful so anyway I will stop my rambling here and get started on editing this photo um, again as I've said in my last photo edit um, I have no specific uh, way of doing things I literally just start experimenting and see what I can come up with with my photo so it makes it a little bit fun and different each time I edit but I'm gonna go ahead and start with cropping my image and I feel like this is a really good one to do the rule of thirds for so I am gonna make my avatar um, in the one third quadrant of this image here and I think that's about good um, I think I'm going to crop that just a little bit more on my head there we go and uh First thing I'm going to want to do is duplicate my layer so that we are not working on the original layer over here and um, work on maybe a little bit of color correcting for this. So uh, there's a few ways that I go about to this when I'm feeling lazy. Sometimes I will go ahead and do the auto setting just to see what it comes up with. I'm not totally happy with that so I'm going to cancel out of that um, and go into my brightness and contrast here and just kind of with it on my own a little bit. Um, I don't think I'm going to do too much to this image. That brightens it up a little bit, but also you don't want to lose any of the details, especially on my skin where my freckles are. So that's a little bit better so just a very subtle touch up there um, next I want to add some depth of field uh, this is the Aria Spiriter method that she taught me recently so um, let's see if I can remember how to do this we go to layer and I'm going to duplicate my layer um, and then we are going to do a Gaussian blur And you don't want to set it too strong, but you want it strong enough that you can really tell that you've blurred out the background. And that giant fountain behind me is uh, definitely not too far from where I'm standing, so you don't want to do it too much. I would say that's probably pretty good. Then we're going to do a mask layer down here. Make sure that you are clicked on this specific layer. You'll have your black and white here that you use to erase. Um, and then I am just going to go in and paint. So, with a soft brush. So, I got my soft brush setting set here. And I'm just going to start painting. Um, I keep my opacity not at 100% up here just because. Um, it makes the edges a little softer and it, it leaves less room for error when I am painting myself and it may be a little bit easier for me to zoom in on my avatar while I'm doing this. So 
Let me zoom in. Oops, that's a little much. And I'm just going to start painting. just a bit to make this go a little bit faster. And don't worry about if you accidentally say I do that. Oops. You just flip your colors here and you can go back and re-put that back in, which is really nice. Like I said in my last video, this is so much easier than um, the way that I used to do my depth of field. So I was really grateful to Aria for teaching me this. Make that a little bit smaller here. To... And it's not going to be perfect. I'm sure there are other ways to go about <clears throat> capturing whoops, depth of field in your images, um, but so far this seems to be the easiest way of doing it and being relatively accurate with it. So. I will also make sure to <clears throat> give you the credits for my outfit in um, the description below. This was an outfit I got at equal 10. My partner gifted it to me, which was very kind of him. I love the details of it. It's a store called uh, Sahina, I think. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. It looks Sahina. I think is the name of it. Um, I might be totally wrong with the pronunciation and the spelling on that, but um, it's a newer store to me, obviously, since I can't remember how to pronounce it or spell it. Uh, but I'm really impressed with their quality. It's re it's really beautiful. And all right, so I got most of that. So, let's see. Oops, yep, right there. So then, after I'm done doing this, I'm just going to go and zoom back out and look and see if I've really missed any areas that look a little fishy here. It looks like down here I missed my boots. So, oops, that was not the right button. I used my eraser by mistake. So, I'm going to go back in here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just make sure I've got all of that. So now you can see if I undo the layer, that depth of field in the background. I probably could have done a little bit more on the depth of field, um, which I don't know. Filter, if I can add that in more, or if it will affect. Nope, I think I have to be on this layer. Filter, blend, gosh, blend. Let's see if it allows me to up that a little bit. It does. Although I'm noticing that when I do it, you start to see the edges a little bit more and the, the little tiny errors I've made. So we won't mess with that. We'll leave it at the blur that it's at. So next, I like to look for different errors that I've made um, with the pose I've used. Uh, the pose I used was Space Cadet by Jean Bang. Her poses are some of my favorite Second Life. Um, and they're perfect, honestly. She does a phenomenal job with her poses. But I like to go in and see if like, I'm clipping anywhere uh, and how I can go about fixing that. Um, I noticed that right here, my sleeve is clipping a little bit. It's honestly not too horrible. But if you want to like try and fix a little bit of this, I use my liquify button sometimes. And I will go, oops, it's still on that blur. So. I'm going to flatten my image, do 
duplicate my layer again, then go into liquify. And liquify just kind of helps me to um, push out the pixels a little bit in areas that I feel need a little bit of shaping. So you can come in and do this. It does lower the quality a little bit. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. But it does kind of help me to make that clipping just a little less obvious. Now, that wasn't a really great job on my part. I should have used a poser um, in World to fix that, but I didn't. But that's okay. Happy mistakes. <laughs> All right. I think that's mostly everything I need to do for liquify for this. Um, I don't see too many other things on here. So I do see where my hair is clipping a little bit. That's another thing. And I also see right here where uh, I did not alpha out my top. So you can zoom in a little bit. And I use the clone stamp. I'm going to make a new layer just in case I screw something up. Oops. And I'm just going to go in and kind of clone stamp. So I will hit Alt and pick my color and then click with my mouse. And that just kind of helps me fix that a little bit. And it's, again, not going to be perfect, but it's better than having the clipping. So we do that. And then honestly, once you scroll out, you don't even notice that it's there anymore. So not perfect, but definitely better. So that we don't keep this video um, to a horrible length here, I am going to speed things up and not do a whole much more editing to this. I do see that my hair is clipping a little bit here, so you can also use the clone stamp for that. Go in and click Alt to click where you want to duplicate and then go in and edit that. You can also then take your eraser, you can do a harder lined one, harder brush, and then just slowly go back in and paint away where you used that soft brush. And it looks like I'm actually on the wrong layer to do this. So I'm going to fix that really quick. Um, you can do control Z and that will backspace. It'll only backspace so far. So hopefully I realized my error here soon enough and I didn't screw this up completely. Okay. So I'm going to duplicate my layer here. I meant to do that before I did the clone stamping. This is what happens when you're doing an editing video. You guys see all my little mistakes I make as I go along, but you can see how I undo my mistakes. So control Z will do it. will undo. If you can't remember that function, you can always go up to edit and undo and that'll, that'll tell you what your function is as well to do that. So there, fix that. Now I can go through with the eraser and just erase on the proper layer. So now when you click it, it's a very subtle change, but it does make a difference when you've got clipping or an issue. So there is that. And then one thing I have been really into lately with my images is doing a photo actions. So you can go to window actions. These are ones that I have purchased um, from a website. Um, I will link the website below, um, but you can get all kinds of different photo actions and you can get them for really good prices. Typically, I think I spent 20 or $30 on this full set and it really makes a big difference with your images. So say these are all like retro series ones. There's a lot of different lighting effect ones. Honestly, today the lighting effects don't make a whole lot of sense just because there's not any strong uh, lighting, but you can see you can click and it'll do 
Oh, that one doesn't make any sense at all for this image, but you can then pull that back down into the trash here. But there's a lot of different ones you can do if you want to add just some random effects. That one's kind of cool. Um, it's like a, a light strip, but almost looks like a film that had a little bit of a um, error in processing, which is pretty cool. Uh, I was a photography major in college, and <clears throat> we did a lot of darkroom stuff. And um, I really loved working in the darkroom because you get some really neat effects. So there's a couple different light strip options you can add in here if you're wanting to do something like that. Honestly, I don't think I want to do any light strips, but I do think I want to make this film or this image look a little bit more retro. Um, and up here, I've got these retro series ones that I've used. One of my favorites is the indie one. I use it a lot on a lot of my images. I just think it gives it this very uh, vintage, old school, indie, retro vibe, which I really love. And then I go in and I start fiddling with my settings in here. Because um, some of the some of the layers I feel like are a little harsh, so this one feel, the brightness one is a little bit harsh for me. So I'll lower that a bit, and <clears throat> we can kind of go through and play. Do you want more green tones, more red blue tones? Um, I kind of like the green tones because when I have this on, I don't feel like those leaves pop as much. But I turn them off, and I feel like the orange and red and the leaves pop a lot more. So you can also lower your exposure a little bit here nice thing is with these actions, if they were made properly, you can really mess with them and change them up a bit. And this is such a basic image today. This is definitely not one of my favorite images I've taken, but it kind of gives you an idea of some of the fun that you can have with the images that you've taken in Black Dragon. Um, so here's my original image. Uh, and here is the uh, final image with some editing done to it and um, I'm pretty happy with it like I said it's not really my favorite image it's a very basic image I did today but it kind of gives you an understanding of some of the um, uh, options that you can play with in Photoshop after you've taken that image uh, so thank you so much for watching today I will upload this to my Flickr and um, if there's anything that you think I should learn or try differently, I'm always open to suggestions and learning new things. So feel free to comment um, in the comments below on my YouTube to um, uh, teach me a few things. There's definitely a lot I need to learn still. So thanks so much for watching and I look forward to doing new videos for you soon. Have a wonderful day.